In this video, we are going to look at the unit circle and some of the key trig ratios that we need in IB exams where we don't have a calculator. So I've drawn up a few things here and I'll explain as we go. But firstly, I want to start with two magic triangles. These are, these are two great triangles which I think you should commit to memory. Uh, you may see these triangles in a tabular format, in a table, but uh, the magic triangles are can be your best friend when it comes to this topic. And what they are used for is they help us find sine, cos, and tan of key angles. Now, I've drawn my, my two triangles here and I'll quickly explain them. This is a triangle where we have a 45 degrees and a 45 degrees. Now, in radians, that's, that's pi on four because it's a quarter of 180 and 180 is pi. So we have uh, degrees angles on the inside and our radian angles on the outside. And what this is telling us is that if we do sine of 45 or sine of pi on four, if you're doing radians, you just need to go opposite over hypotenuse, which is sine, and you'll get the value. So sine of 45 will just be opposite one over the hypotenuse root two. And we can verify this on our calculator but we need to be able to solve sine of 45 without a calculator in IB exams. Okay, now if we did cos of let's say 30 degrees, we can go to the triangle that has 30 degrees, which is this one here. And the radian of 30 degrees is pi on six because 30 is one sixth of 180, so that's pi. Okay, so cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, so you would take the adjacent which is root three over the hypotenuse, and we get the exact value, root three on two, which we could verify on our calculator. Okay, and if we want to, for example, do 10 of, let's say 60 degrees or pi on three radians, we can go to the triangle that has pi on three, which is this down here, and take 10, and 10 is opposite over adjacent. It'd be root three on one, which we can just say is root three. So these two triangles help us to find all of the key trig ratios that we need in non-calculator exams. We can find sine, cos, and tan of 30, 45, and 60 degrees. Now, how does this relate to the unit circle? Well, I've drawn a unit circle over here, and uh, we know that the unit circle starts at the origin in the middle, and it has a distance of one unit out to our circle points. So for example, if we go all the way over to this point here, it will have one in the X and zero in the Y, so that's why it has the coordinate one zero, so on, so on. Now each of these key uh, top and top bottom and side to side points has their degrees and radian value. So if we start here and we go around, we get to 90, which is pi on two, then we'll get to 180, which is uh, pi, and then 270, which is three pi on two, and then back to uh, two pi or 360 degrees. Okay, so if I were to draw some angle, let's say 30 degrees, I'm going to go up to about 30, and if we work our way down and say this is 30 degrees, what we know is we naturally know the value of sine of 30. Well, we can go to where 30 is, and sine of 30 will just be, take 30 opposite over hypotenuse, one over two. And what, what that actually means write it down here, sine of 30 is one over two, which I'm going to write as a decimal, 0 0.5, just so we can kind of see what that means. And what that means is if we have a total length of one going up, as you can see here, the height of this line will just be 0 0.5. And that just means that we're going to have a positive value here, where the height is one half of the total length of the line, because the total length was one. So that's what sine actually means. Sine is the height component of any angle compared to its uh, full length, the hypotenuse. So that's why we'll get a value of 0 0.5. Now, if we did cos of 30, cos of 30, well, we can go to our magic triangle and do cos, which is root three on two. And root three on two as a decimal is around somewhere between 0 0.8 and 0 0.9. I think it's about 0 0.85-ish. And that kind of makes sense now because this angle is quite shallow. The X component of this diagonal line will be 0 0.85, 
or 85% of the total length. So hopefully what you're seeing here is that sine is the height component and cos is the width component of any diagonal line. Now what we can then do is we can do sine, cos and tan of these key angles, 30, 45 and 60, in different quadrants. So if I chose to do the angle over here, which if we go around, this will be 150 degrees. Well, we can think about what this angle must be. If that's 150 and this is 180, this must be 30. So if I took sine of 150, I'm just finding the height here at 150, which looks to be the same height at 30. So that's why sine of 150 will also be positive a half or 0 0.5. But if I did sine of 210, which is down here, notice that I will have the same, the same value of the height, 0 0.5, but now it's negative because it's going down. So sine of 210 is negative a half or negative 0 0.5. And sine of this one here would be 30 down, so 330. This would be the same height but it would be negative again. So sine of 330 would be negative 0.5. And you can do this for cos, cos being the width, and tan uh, for all of our key angles. And what, what we can actually do is a bit of a shortcut. You may have seen these letters before. A in the first quadrant, S in the second quadrant, T in the third quadrant, and C in the fourth quadrant. Uh, these stand for all. A stands for all, and that means if you take sine, cos, and tan of any angle in this first quadrant, it will be positive because the height will be positive, the width will be positive, and tan is the, actually the opposite over the adjacent. It's the uh, y over the x. So they will all be positive. In the second quadrant here, only sine, that's why it's the s quadrant, is positive because any angle... Uh, in the second quadrant will have a positive height, but it has a negative width. It's going left of the y-axis. So only sine's positive. In the third quadrant, only tan is positive because both sine and cos, the height and the width, will be negative. And tan is actually a negative over a negative, which will turn it positive. And then in the fourth quadrant, only cos is positive because it's going down, uh, the height is negative, so sine will be negative and tan will be negative only because the width will be positive. So this is the unit circle. Uh, it's, a, it's a very tricky topic to sort of get your head around, but uh, the goal of this video is to firstly, if you can solve sine, cos and tan of 30, 45 and 60, hopefully then you can see the big picture and how it relates to a full circle where you can then solve sine, cos and tan of 30, 45, 60 in any quadrant just using the positive and negative values, depending on what quadrant it is in. Okay, I encourage you to practice a bunch of questions on this topic, and good luck.